The Bermuda Triangle is the infamous grave for any number of ships, some filled with a fortune and treasure now buried under the ocean floor. Lee Cowan steadied his sea legs to take us on a treasure hunt. Carl Allen, he's a fisherman's fisherman. He's been coming to the Bahamas since he was 12, never missed a year, to this small island of Walker's Cay, where he likes to say the bonefish meet the billfish. There we go, all right, a little blue runner actually there. But as an adult, it wasn't really fish that brought him to this southwest corner of the Bermuda Triangle. It was the legend of a long lost Spanish galleon. I am a treasure hunter, <laughs> I, I fully admit it. The Nuestra Señora de las Maravillas, Our Lady of Wonders, was the kind of treasure ship that would have even made the pirate Blackbeard blush. On board, untold riches, plundered from the Spanish New World. But on one dark January night in 1656, disaster struck. There was some miscommunication. The Maravillas turned, and the other ship turned, and it rammed the Maravillas midship. These are probably from salvage efforts of the Maravillas by the Spanish. Michael Pateman is curator of the Bahamas Maritime Museum in Freeport. And it went down how fast? Less than an hour. Ever since, her cursed cargo has brought wealthy treasure hunters flocking to these waters. One of the large cannons was found. In 1972, adventurer Robert Marks stunned the maritime world by pulling up artifacts that confirmed basically all the rumors about the Maravillas were true. Some people claim it's one of the richest Spanish galleons to go down in the New World. What treasure they found ended up mostly in auctions and private collections the world over. In 1999, the Bahamian government had had enough of treasure leaving its waters and put a stop to all of it. But marine archaeologists like Jim Sinclair insist the main pile of treasure has yet to be found. Do you know how much is left out there? If you're going to just use dollars to quantify, yeah. we're probably looking at well over another $100 million still sitting in the sand out here. Really? Hmm? Which, for Carl Allen, was like the siren song of the mermaid. If we don't do this, Mother Nature gets it, or pirates. And that doesn't do anybody any good. He made his money in plastics, garbage bags mostly. And in 2016, he sold that multi-million dollar company in Dallas and then announced to his wife that he was going fishing, this time for the Maravillas. So I immediately bought her a yacht for her birthday. <laughs> and let me tell you, you want to get your wife into yachting? Name it after her. That's Gigi, their super yacht. Their son Thomas says mom is indeed she... pretty happy. I think she likes it down here better than he does. <laughs> you can't get her out of the water. It's, it's amazing. But the Gigi was just a start. Alan also bought this 183-foot research vessel and all the support boats to go with it. He hired crews. He hired divers, most of them local. And then he started searching for a home port. Instead of just fishing Walker's Cay, he decided to buy that, too. The island's deep channel became the home to his own private navy. Everybody thought I was wrong. So many people called me a fool, a laughingstock, and they're not laughing anymore. Look Holy cow. With his wife Gigi at his side, Alan Exploration has recovered more than 10,000 artifacts from the Maravillas. When I found it, it was so encrusted, I could see just little bright specks. Pendants, gold chain, silver bars, crucifixes, all seemingly no worse for the wear. Oh my gosh. It's a 20 carat cabochon cut emerald in the middle. There's 12 emeralds, we believe one for each apostle. They don't like to talk about what all of this is worth because they have no immediate plans to sell any of it. The, curiosity of what the Allens funded the construction of that maritime museum. They also run it themselves because they believe the Maravillas treasure belongs in the Bahamas. And, well, so do they. Come on, Cash. They're full-time Bahamian residents now. Walker's K, well, that was abandoned until 2018 when the Allens bought it and started fixing it up. When Hurricane Dorian ravaged the Bahamas, they offered their treasure hunting fleet to deliver relief supplies instead. 
From what I'm seeing off the stern of Reaper. It was that same year that the Bahamian government lifted the moratorium and granted the Allens exclusive rights to survey some 250 square miles of underwater desert. Lee, we are just behind the hole, so we will be a swim upstream a little bit. They were generous enough to host us at sea, but they also put me to work. To dive with the Allens is to disappear into an underwater scavenger hunt on a long, dead reef. It's tedious work. The conditions have to be perfect, and it's not without its dangers. But I can say firsthand their passion for the hunt is infectious. Oh my gosh, you found those just on this dive? The last dive. These are nice, big, chunky, what you call pieces of eight. And they'll clean up really nice. Right now, they're, you can see the oxide on there. But despite this massive effort, the ever-shifting sands of the Bahamas are still the boss. You could have the right equipment, which I built. You could have the right people, which I have. And then Mother Nature says, no, not, not today. It's going to be her that'll run me out of this business. Mother Nature. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but she's not beaten him yet. The pull of the sea is as strong now as it was when he was a boy. And it's anchored the Allens to the Bahamas in all the best of ways. We love doing it, and we're helping these people at the same time. Where do you sign up for that?